uh, Trump's bite is 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 uh, his bark is worse than his bite, right? His policies were pretty good at, toward the end of the year, toward the beginning of the year, yep. and then the shooting happened, and uh, of course it was it was like we talked about 64D underwater backwards backgammon where he was actually pushing for some of this gun control legislation. Now we don't really know, and here we have it this week with the tariffs and the taxes. This is something I've always been against. A lot of people don't understand. I think most the, the biggest uh, partner in steel I think we have in the United States or aluminum is Canada. Uh, really? uh, yeah, yes. it's, it's not China, it's Canada. Now, China's I get number it. 11 on the list. Yeah, China's number 11 on the list. Yes. Uh, it, the, the, the notion that we're being screwed by Chinese steel is just not true. 70% of all steel consumed in the United States is created in the United States. The steel industry produced 5% more than they did last year, uh, the, the year before. Uh, so meaning that it's actually growing, the steel industry in the United States. The stock price at companies like Nucor was like 10 bucks at, at two th in 2000. Now it's like $62. Uh, the United States have been producing approximately the same amount of steel since 1983. It's just that only 25% the same number of employees are required to produce that amount of steel because technology is what's taking away the jobs, right. not competition from foreign sources. So none of this makes any sense. For every job in the steel industry, there are at least 40 jobs that are dependent on products from the steel industry, meaning that if you increase tariffs, which increase prices in the steel industry, you're passing those prices on to a bevy of other industries. And I'm sorry, watching billionaire Wilbur Ross on national television holding up a Campbell's soup can to explain to the poor why it is that it doesn't matter that they're paying a little bit more for their canned soup is not real good press. Do they use steel? I thought that was tin. Hmm. So I guess uh, it it's, it's, a tin, it's, it's steel plated tin, right? Uh, I guess it, that's or right tin because tin aluminum? would, be, tin would cor corrode, right? I don't know exactly. Either yeah. way, someone's yeah. gets, either way, there's BPA and someone's getting some cancer if it's Campbell's soup. From what I understand, <laughs> well, at least, it's, at least a little paradise. I just need to buy my oregano oil. You'll be all good. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me ask you this: there is there is some inconsistency here because I understand some people support this idea because they feel as though, as though we've been screwed on free trade. Now here there is some truth. There's a kernel of truth, right? A good example is I talked about this with uh, Ronald Reagan. The least president, the least conservative thing he did was the Harley Davidson and fiasco. The reason Americans wanted uh, Japanese bikes at that time was because they were better. Anyone go back to the AMF days? It was just, just awful, awful, awful motorcycles. And the protectionism actually hurt the consumer because we wanted to preserve an American company that should have gone bankrupt. Um, some people don't care. Be American, buy American. So let's put that aside because I know we're not going to get everyone to agree. I think everyone has to agree that there is a wild, this is how I feel about this, there's a wildly inconsistent message this week. Either the economy is rip-roaring and it's booming and we're doing fantastically and we can't take enough winning, or we're getting screwed by foreign competitors and we need to batten down the hatches, it, it seems like there are some mixed signals. For sure. And I think this is one of the problems for Trump is that he doesn't care about the numbers. He's not interested in the numbers. And you can see that because the stock market has been down since these announcements about the tariffs. Uh, the, the markets are, have been thrown into its turmoil. All the good that was done by the tax cuts could easily be taken away through a trade war. I think it's more about Trump has this vision in his head of 1956 America when we were just making assembly line trucks uh, in, and we were making our own steel in Pittsburgh and in Gary, Indiana. And yeah. never mind the fact that the sky was like purple because of all of the, <laughs> all of the right. garbage that was being tossed into the air. In the production of that, so you'll never find, mind the fact that the Pittsburgh unemployment rate today is 4.6%, significantly lower than it was during those days, and the air is breathable in Pittsburgh because everybody is now in the healthcare industry or the service industry. Right. It, Trump has this, this, and it's why I think, honestly, there's such a gap in the feelings about Trump between people who are 60 and up and people who are 40 and under. People who are 40 and under look at this and they go, what are you even talking about? Like, you're talking about the steel industry as though, as the steel industry goes, so goes America. I don't know anybody who actually works in the steel industry. I know people in the car industry. I know people in the service industry. And then there are a bunch of people who are over 60, and they remember working at a plant for 40 years and getting their gold watch for retirement. And they're thinking, well, if we That's can bring back those days, yeah. that would actually fix everything. That's